What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car truck SUV reviews on YouTube and today we are in the new 2022 Nissan Pathfinder courtesy of Apple Nissan in York PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. And so I'm in this one today because it has been completely redesigned for the 2022 model year. And my favorite part, the CVT is a officially gone for the 2022 model year so i'm excited to be testing out the transmission alone in this particular suv but this is a three row suv by nissan competing with the hyundai palisade kia telluride honda pilot toyota highlander just to name a few there and so in this video i will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering wheel, ride quality sound system exhaust clip all of that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always Let's start with pricing. And so as you can imagine, there are several different trim levels for the 2022 Pathfinder. First one being the S, starting at $33,410. SV for $36,200. SL, which is the one we have today, starting at $39,590. And lastly, the Platinum, starting at $46,190. And by the way, that was all pricing for the front wheel drive configuration. If you wanted to add all wheel drive, simply add $1,900 then to any of those prices. And but so then regardless of trim level that you go with, the power plant on the Pathfinder is going to be the same. Powering this beast is a 3.5 liter direct injected V6, putting out 284 horsepower at 6,400 RPM, 259 pound-feet of torque coming in at 4,800 RPM, power sent to front wheels or all wheels through a nine-speed automatic with paddle shifters, which you guys know we will be testing out in a little bit here, but zero to 60 time is going to come in at approximately 6.7 seconds with MBG numbers coming in at 21 in the the city 26 highway for the front wheel drive 21 in the city 27 then on the highway for the all-wheel drive taking regular unleaded fuel and so but now having got all of that out of the way before we do any kind of fun paddle shifter test or acceleration test here in the pathfinder did want to mention the drive modes and so there is a circular dial directly behind the shifter that is going to allow you to adjust those driving modes including sport eco mud and rut sand snow and tow mode as well adjusting things like the shift points the throttle response steering sensitivity all-wheel drive system engagement and the VDC tuning then as well. So now having gotten all that out of the way, I think I'm going to put it in sport driving mode here as I just did. And let's put the paddle shifters here to the test first, because after all, this isn't a CVT anymore. This should actually have some emotion to it. So let's go ahead and put them to the test and let's see how quickly they are going to react for us here. All right, and so to put it in full manual shift mode, I simply just slid the shifter all the way to the back one more time there, and that is telling me I'm in first gear in three, two, one, here we go. Quick. Actually, not bad. They actually do react pretty darn quickly. Kind of surprised me because typically with SUVs, you don't expect that or really need it, but you got it here in the Pathfinder, which is a good thing. And also with paddle shifters, you can also use them for engine braking. Let's say when you're going down a hill, when it's snowing out, instead of actually hitting the brakes and risk sliding off the road, you can use the paddle shifters to do a little downshifting and use the engine braking as opposed to the actual brakes themselves. So it's kind of a safety feature in itself there as well. But to get back full control to the Pathfinder, I'm simply just gonna slide the shifter the back one more time and therefore the pathfinder now has full control yet again and now let's do the acceleration test here with the pathfinder having full control and let's see how quickly this thing can get us here up the speed all right a bit of a rolling start here i believe but three two one there's a car behind us you know yeah that'll work plenty of an acceleration absolutely not going to have any issues merging onto the highway so it is a v6 i didn't really expect there was going to be any issues so plenty of acceleration for the pathfinder without a doubt but to go along with that acceleration as always braking is equally important and so up front you will find 13.8 inch ventilated front discs in the back 13 inch solid rear discs as far as that braking feel goes Eh, it's a little bit on the softer side. Wouldn't have minded a bit firmer of a braking feel, a little more bite to the brakes, but it is as expected. This is a three-row SUV, so I don't expect it to be like a sports car, but it is a little bit 
on the softer side, I will say that. But then touching on suspension and handling, up front you're gonna get an independent McPherson strut front suspension, in the back independent multi-link rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars, also dual flow path shock absorbers as well. And by the way, when it comes to the ride quality, that's something I definitely noticed when I first started. The ride quality is definitely very nice in the Pathfinder, even without an adaptive suspension or an air suspension, ride quality is perfectly fine. Definitely absorbing PA's road and perfections as I'm about to hit a manhole perfectly fine so absolutely no issues when it comes to ride quality as far as steering feel goes it is adjustable again dependent upon which driving mode that you put it in so if you wanted a heavier weight to the steering put it in that sport mode and if you didn't just take it out of sport mode so again it is adjustable i will say it is just right for the pathfinder it's not too loose but it's not too firm on the heavier side either so steering feel is perfectly fine in this thing as far as cabin noise goes i will say at highway speeds i was getting a little bit of wind noise coming from the driver's side nothing on the passenger side so i don't know it's a little bit of wind noise but again it's nothing that would bother me though personally so i will say that then touching on visibility i would say it's okay and the reason i say it's okay is because those third row headrests are gigantic they are perhaps the Sasquatch of all headrests. They are the largest headrests I have ever seen, but I would imagine if you didn't have any third row passengers, you more than likely are going to fold that third row down and therefore visibility is going to be a heck of a lot better and probably near perfect. But with those third row headrests up, it is a little bit hindered when it comes to visibility. But anyways, to go along those lines of visibility, I will say rain sensing windshield wipers are going to come on the platinum trim level only and also a heads up display projecting your speed, speed limit and safety features onto your windshield that again is going to come on the platinum trim level only but that about rounds out the performance segment of this review you guys let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2022 nissan pathfinder all right so here she is you guys the new 2022 nissan pathfinder finished in deep ocean blue very cool name for an exterior color in my opinion but anyways let's go ahead and start up front of course you are looking at a completely revised vehicle a completely revised front end for the 2022 model year led headlights do come standard on every single trim level across the board you gotta love that they do of course come with the automatic feature meaning when it starts to get dark and at night those headlights are going to turn on automatically for you then led daytime running lights also coming standard led fog lights you guys can see that incorporated into the very bottom portion of that front bumper they definitely look good down there and a new not so v motion front grill it's kind of like a u motion almost front grill now if i were to call it something but it definitely looks good up there the chrome accents definitely give it a more high-end look i do like the white accenting within the nissan logo as well not a whole lot of manufacturers do any kind of accent colors with their logo so I do like the way this one turned out but anyways silver accenting then on the lower portion of that front grill as well but overall extremely nice looking revised front end for the 2022 pathfinder without a doubt but that about rounds out the front of this one let's now go ahead and make our way to the side of this one all right so now since we are around to the side black roof rails coming with the sv trim level silver roof rails coming with the sl and platinum trim levels then and then no roof rails in case you were curious for the s trim level so did want to mention that but i do like the crossbars that we have that is an added option but do like the way they look up there as well rear privacy glass does come standard across the board for the pathfinder floating roof line towards the back you guys can see that black portion that gives it the floating roof line that looks good back there chrome belt line molding i do see that as well one of the coolest things though you guys could probably see actually i'll just get up close for you guys here pathfinder etched into the matte black portion of the side skirts here i thought that was a pretty cool little accent not a whole lot of manufacturers will add that little attention to detail but i do like that nissan did that so looks pretty darn good right there then when it comes to those side mirrors they are body colored power adjustable side mirrors with led integrated turd signals for every single trim level across the board gotta love that if you wanted heated side mirrors go with the sv trim level and up and then the platinum is going to add to that power folding feature and the reverse tilt down feature so when you put this thing in reverse the mirrors are going to tilt down so you don't go running over maybe a kid's bike or scooter or whatever so that's how you're going to get that with the platinum but then taking a look down at the wheel configurations 18 inch dark painted aluminum alloys for the s and sv 
18 inch machine finished aluminum alloys then for the SL, that's what you're currently looking at. And then 20 inch machine finished aluminum alloys for the Platinum. But overall, yet again, a very nice side profile to the Pathfinder. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back of this one. And so, but now since we are around back all the way to the top, you have that body colored shark fin antenna, just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light, just below that rear window wiper, LED tail lights actually come standard across the board as well. Do you like the Pathfinder horizontal horizontal lettering spelled out there. It's a little thicker lettering than you see on some other manufacturers, so it makes more of a statement. I do like the design to that. Max towing capacity, by the way, because you guys can see that towing hitch towards the bottom there, 6,000 pounds, which is pretty darn impressive considering trucks even, like the new Hyundai Santa Cruz and the Honda Ridgeline can only tow up to 5,000, so Nissan Pathfinder puts it in at 6,000. That's pretty cool. Anyways, single exhaust outlet tucked away all the way to the bottom there, so I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. All right, so now since we are around back of the Pathfinder, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, there is a power tailgate for the SL trim level, the one we have today. Then there is a hands-free power tailgate when it comes to the Platinum trim level, if you wanted that. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 16.6 cubic feet behind that third row. If that was not enough space, of course, that does fold down, bumping it up to 47 cubic feet. And then with all rows folded, that is going to come in at 78.9 cubic feet. Then I did want to mention there is some cargo lighting found on the back portion of that rear tailgate as well. There are four cargo tie down hooks back there. There are also grocery bag hooks back there as well. I actually found a 12 volt power outlet and you also get in floor storage for every single trim level across the board if you lift up underneath of that cargo floor. So that is pretty cool. I like that every single trim level gets that. But then making our way up to the third row leg room, that is going to come in at an even 28 inches, which of course on paper isn't a whole lot for reference. I am an even six feet tall. Possibly you can scoot up the second row a good bit to kind of make room for taller adults in the back. But really, 28 inches is going to be best left for small children in that third row. But did want to mention there is rear ventilation for all three rows. That's going to be found on the top upper ceiling here of the Pathfinder. So everyone's going to stay comfortable for that reason. And those third row passengers do have several cup holders back there as well if they are super thirsty at any given time. But then make our way up to the second row legroom that comes in at 35.5 inches. So for reference, I am an even six feet tall yet again, believe it or not, this is how much space I had in that second row. Captain chairs are going to come with the platinum and they're gonna be optional then on the SV and SL. We actually do have that option. We have the captain's chairs because otherwise you're gonna get the bench seating for three people found on the S, SV and SL. But again, it is optional if you wanted captain's chairs. But overall, heated second row coming with the platinum and also optional for our SL. Sunshades coming with the SL and platinum trim levels. I love that, it's especially good if you have a very small child or a newborn, you do wanna block the sun because you don't want them staring directly at it. So sunshades are definitely a big plus there and the manufacturer ones are so much better than the ones you can get at Walmart. Also, dual USB charging ports you can find back there as well. And there is a section for the tri-zone climate control where the rear passengers can control their own temperatures back there as well, which is pretty cool. And overall, in between the captain's chairs, I guess you could say, there is a uh, good bit of storage along with some extra cup holders there as well. So overall, second row is done very, very well. Definitely everything you really possibly even want in the second row. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the front row, front seats here. Manually adjustable cloth seating coming with the S, the S v trim level then is going to add 10-way power driver seat with two-way power lumbar and heated front seats as well then if you jump up to the sl that is going to give you four-way power adjustable front passenger seat and leather seating then and then if you were to jump up to the platinum that is going to add to that memory settings as well as a quilted leather seating and ventilated front seats then as well but i kid you not First thing I said to myself when I hopped in the Pathfinder was how incredibly comfortable these seats were, at least in our SL trim level that we have today. They are plenty adjustable. You kind of sink into them. That is kind of the impression that I got when I immediately sat in this thing. So 
very comfortable seats, no issues whatsoever in taking a long road trip in the Pathfinder without a doubt. But then taking a look at the steering wheel, it is tilt and telescoping. It is leather wrapped for the SV trim level and up. It will be heated then for the SL and platinum trim levels. And it is a smooth leather wrapped if you were to go with that platinum trim level then. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key. All of your buttons are all located on one side of the key, you have lock, unlock, the button to pop the rear lift gate, and the circular button towards the very top. That is going to be remote start, which comes on the SV trim level and up. However, a push button start is going to come standard across the board for every single trim level. So all I'm going to do here, simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just to the left of the air vents there. And so, but then once started up, there is a tachometer all the way to your left, speedometer on your right, and a fairly decent sized digital display front and side center to control what is on that. There are steering wheel mounting controls found on the left side of the steering wheel. It does give you how many miles you have left until you hit empty. Also trip A, trip B. You can choose to display a digital speedometer up there if you wanted to. Also gives you different information like when you're running low on fuel, for instance, in our particular case. But really, there is a ton of stuff you can customize up there. But if you were looking for that full digital gauge cluster, the one you could find on the Rogue perhaps that you have already seen, it is available and it does come standard on the Platinum trim level. So that's why we don't have it today. Wish I could have shown that to you guys, but that is an incredible look. Definitely a very nice gauge cluster with that Platinum trim level. But let's now go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality. I'm gonna start with the power moonroof. It's going to come on the Platinum. It is gonna be optional for the SV and SL. We do have that option yet again. So it is kind of a dual pane power moonroof goes into the second row as well so that was pretty cool overhead sunglass holder is going to come standard on all trim levels across the board auto dimming rear view mirror with home link controls for up to three different garage doors coming with the sl and platinum trim levels interior accent lighting coming with the platinum tri-zone climate control like i was mentioning to you guys that actually comes standard on every single trim level you don't always get that even in three row suvs you don't always get that it comes standard i'll put it that way so usually it's an upper trim levels but you actually even get it on the s trim level here the pathfinder so i do like that wireless phone charger coming with the platinum is going to be optional on the sl yet again we do have that option it's located just in front of the shifter and speaking of in front of that shifter you also have a 12 volt power outlet you have a usb charging port and a standard phone charging port just to the right of that shifter you have a little bit of storage you have dual cup holders just behind that within the center armrest you have a very large amount of storage along with a pen holder on the back side of this and i like how pathfinder is kind of etched into the front portion of this center armrest as well but overall interior quality is actually pretty darn good just above the passenger side glove box you do have some rubberized storage up there as well i do like the contrast stitching just above that also like how there's gloss black finishes found on the doors around where the window buttons are they could have left that a matte black or gray plastic but they didn't and I like that as well. So overall, it kind of surprised me. Nissan did pretty darn good when it comes to interior quality with the Pathfinder without a doubt. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen here. Eight inch color touchscreen display is going to come with the S and SV trims. Then if you were to jump up to the SL or Platinum, you're gonna get this nine inch color touchscreen display. But either way, you still get Bluetooth and audio streaming. You still get Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. However, if you go with the nine inch screen, you get wireless Android Auto Apple CarPlay. I love that. Meaning you don't have to connect it via USB cable to the actual vehicle. You can simply just set it down here on the wireless phone charger or wherever, I guess you could say, but it is gonna be wireless then. So that's pretty cool. Factory navigation system, also coming with a nine inch screen if you wanted that. Climate control settings you could check out up there as well, along with your radio settings. And by the way, when it comes to the sound systems, you will get six speakers with the S, SV, and SL, then a 13 speaker Bose sound system for the Platinum, which is gonna be optional on the SL. We do have that option, believe it or not. That's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today, and let's test out our 13 speaker Bose sound system that we have here today. <laughs> Actually, what really impressed me with that sound system with Bose was the clarity. The clarity was amazing. Of course, the bass was there. You would expect it to be, though, but the clarity. That isn't always there with other sound systems that I test, even the upper sound systems. So the clarity really impressed me there with that Bose system. And I actually had a Bose sound system in my Infiniti G35 back in the day. Never had any issues, it never failed me, never broke. So definitely a very nice sound system for the Pathfinder without a doubt. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is 
when you do put this one in reverse you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board every trim is going to get that but if you were to go with the sl or platinum you're also going to get a surround view monitor or that bird's eye view letting you know what is entirely all around your vehicle that's going to be the screen to the right which is always is going to lead us into safety and so to start front side side curtain airbags do come standard also though driver and passenger knee airbags as well you don't always get that in the back you're going to have latch aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats rear child door locks tire pressure monitoring system that's all super boring at this point but also coming standard on every single trim level will be adaptive cruise control forward collision warning autonomous emergency braking with pedestrian detection lane departure warning lane keep assist blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert you don't always get that standard on other suvs rear parking sensors reverse automatic braking automatic high beams and driver attention warning system then as well but then if you were to jump up to the sl or platinum you're also going to get front and rear parking sensors and traffic sign recognition then as well and so but overall when it comes to my final thoughts here of the pathfinder i do love the redesign this is an extremely good looking suv very aggressive very masculine in my opinion i love the look of it digital gauges are great wish i would have had it on the sl trim level that we have today nissan you should make that an option for the sl because i definitely love the digital gauge clusters that you do i've seen them before no more continuously variable transmission that's the number one selling point of this thing the transmission that it now has is absolutely wonderful and a million decades better than the CVT in the previous generation. Very good interior quality as well, I will say that. As far as room for improvement goes, I don't know. The only thing I could really think of is maybe some multicolor ambient lighting would be pretty cool. Wouldn't have minded seeing that, but you got the digital gauges available. You got the excellent Bose sound system. All in all, definitely a big fan of the new Pathfinder. But let me know what you guys think of this thing in the comment section below. That is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you wanted to see what's coming next on the channel before it actually gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel. After all, do appreciate you guys watching more than you know. I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay go.